The official volunteer classes here for the San Francisco beach cleanup are taken very seriously. In fact, you are covered quite literally from head to toe in protective gear, including double layers of gloves, yellow boots, and an entire plastic body shield. San Francisco State administrators refuse to comment on another potential fee increase. But if the next academic year is anything like the past five, students should expect another fee hike. Now, if you're a registered voter in San Francisco or want to drop off an absentee ballot, the San Francisco State Library is an official polling place. Reporting live on campus, this is Nikki Garcia. Back to you guys in the studio. Types of housing structures, such as these here in San Francisco, can be just as diverse as the people who live in them. So if you're a homeowner, do a little bit of research to find out if earthquake insurance is right for you. Energy efficient light bulbs such as these were being given away for free all day on campus in order to remind students how important it is to go green. Professional dog handlers may know how to handle a pit bull, but the city of San Francisco is not going to take any chances. In fact, any pit bull or pit bull mix in the city must be sterilized. Nikki Garcia is live on campus with the story. Nikki? That's right, Julie. With the presidential primaries coming up this February, a lot of Democratic candidates are going to be fighting for the Bay Area vote. This weekend, Senator Hillary Clinton made a campaign stop in downtown Oakland. Let's take a look. Last week's oil spill in the San Francisco Bay has been described as one of the worst environmental disasters this decade. It is still unclear who is responsible, the captain, the radar, or the Coast Guard. But in the wake of finger pointing and a shortage of answers, there wasn't a shortage of volunteers. They're being called guerrilla volunteers, unofficial, untrained citizens who can't believe what has happened to their beach. You don't even feel like you're making progress. I mean, we've been out for an hour and it just keeps washing up and keeps washing up. It is actually illegal for these untrained volunteers to be handling oil on the beach. Without the proper safety gear, they're putting their own health at risk. On the other hand, certified volunteers are trained by professional city officials, require four-hour training courses, and are restricted to certain parts of beaches. But at Ocean Beach, the oil is spreading onto shore, and the guerrilla volunteers aren't going to wait around. Joe Hill is helping coordinate the volunteers. He says that because they aren't official, they can utilize more people. We're a lot more effective than an official agency can be just because of all the people we can get rallied very quickly to do, uh, do the cleanup. The volunteers were recruited online and over 300 people came to help clean. Many local organizations donated food and all of the various supplies, including the efficient hair mats to blot up oil. So until the EPA comes to take over and clean Ocean Beach, these guerrilla volunteers will be showing up to do their part. There are still traces of oil left here on Ocean Beach, which is noted as one of the most beautiful in the city. And if it wasn't for the help of our unofficial guerrilla volunteers, this environmental disaster could have been a lot worse. Reporting at Ocean Beach in San Francisco, this is Nikki Garcia, State of Events. Diagnosing Alzheimer's disease has always been a complex and expensive procedure. The debilitating disease has previously needed brain scans for a proper diagnosis. But here at the Veteran Affairs Hospital in Palo Alto, Stanford researchers have made a breakthrough discovery. Now with a simple blood test, doctors can diagnose Alzheimer's disease. Marcus Bridgey is a Stanford postdoctoral fellow. He and his research team made the discovery. I think it's the first time that we can show that something changes in the blood rather than just only in the brain during the disease. The discovery began by looking at the patterns of proteins in blood. Marcus and his team used blood samples of Alzheimer's patients and compared the protein analysis with patients who were clinically diagnosed with the disease. The results matched with 90% accuracy. They then compared the blood samples of people with a mild cognitive impairment and were able to predict which ones would develop Alzheimer's within the next two to five years. This is the brain of a mouse. Mice brains such as these are used as a model for humans in Alzheimer's research at the Stanford University labs. But why is this research so important? Every 72 seconds, someone in the United States is diagnosed with the disease. This startling statistic from the Alzheimer's Association doesn't end there. Their latest study also found that 5 million people currently have Alzheimer's, and this number is expected to double every 10 years. Marcus is hopeful about what this test can mean for Alzheimer's patients. We can catch the disease much earlier and with that, hopefully, treatment will become much earlier available for these patients. 
The blood test is intended to catch the disease early, but is only meant for those who already show symptoms of memory loss. The next step is making this test available for further research and eventually for use in clinics. Reporting in Palo Alto, this is Nikki Garcia, State of Events. Of State of Events, I'm Julie Tepper. And I'm Nikki Garcia. Today we will be bringing you extensive local team coverage of the San Francisco oil spill. Our top story tonight, firefighters found two people dead Thursday morning after a fire at the Star of India restaurant in San Francisco. The bodies of the two men were found in a loft that partially collapsed during the fire. Officials say the victims likely died as a result of smoke inhalation. The blaze was put out so nearby businesses were not affected. The victims have not been identified and the cause of the fire is still being investigated. A strong cyclone has hit Bangladesh Thursday night. It was going 150 miles per hour. With its power, it has destroyed houses, trees, and power poles. 3.2 million people are expected to evacuate. So far, 620,000 people have moved to shelters which are in schools, mosques, and public buildings. Traffic on Interstate 880 in Hayward is clearing up, but the streets near the accident are still pretty congested. This morning, all lanes were shut down after body parts were found. Police say the victim was a 50-year-old Hispanic or African-American man who may have been homeless. Rosario, I understand that demonstrations are taking place outside the U.S. Embassy in Ankara. Why is this? Well, Nikki, Barack Obama was in the Bay Area this week. His first stop was at Google in Mountain View. The crowd was full of young supporters. He came prepared to talk about net neutrality, which means that Internet traffic will be treated equally by carriers. He later came to San Francisco, where 6,000 people came to see him. He talked about the war in Iraq, his policy views towards Iran, and the differences between him and other candidates. I'm Erica to get that. And I'm Nikki Garcia. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week, and enjoy your weekend.